Okay, here is a rant that I've been meaning to do for a long, long time, and today I'm in the spirit for it. I don't know if anyone has ever like coined this term, but if they haven't, I want to coin it. I want to coin the term black girl anxiety. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like one day I was just like sitting and I was just thinking about all these things that I'm processing now in therapy, uh, being 28 years old and looking back on shit that happened in my life. And I'm just like, oh my God, like that was racist. Or, oh my God, that was trauma. Oh my God, that was racial trauma. <laughs> and, and just like all of these things that shaped me into the person that I am with the issues that I got now. And I just started thinking like, man, there are like, there are very specific anxieties that you just grow up with if you're a black girl. And there is, I, there's no way to escape it, I feel. There's no way to escape it. I feel like not, and I feel like like mainstream therapy probably doesn't like focus on these things. Um, almost like basically no other ethnic group can really, really compare like not compare. I don't want to say I don't want to ever compare trauma and everything, but it's just it no they can no one else can have the very specific anxiety that black girls do. Um and it's just and it's and it's literally like anxiety that we have been that has been drilled into our heads about everything about us, how we look, how we dress, what we like, how we talk, how well we do. Like it's Okay, let me give let me give you some examples, right? Like every, almost every black girl, and I want to generalize, but I think it's safe to say that like every black girl has grown grown up with some sort of hair anxiety. Hair anxiety. Seriously, At, like we all know that like like European standards of beauty are basically that's the standard of beauty here in America, here in the United States. And when you, you, you know, you keep on seeing people on TV and all your favorite actors and actresses being cool and pretty and the pretty girl, like, you know, the, the archetype of the pretty girl always cast in these movies and shows and they look nothing like you, like absolutely nothing like you, you know, and, and they have straight hair. They all have straight hair. Like we've all had to sit down for like hours and get our hair rolled in like the big rollers or we had to straighten our hair for church. And if it's, and if, but God forbid, your hair is natural or nappy, nappy or anything like that, because then you feel ugly and you just don't feel pretty. Like a lot of us have gone through that phase of just like not feeling pretty and not feeling put together. And we've been told that like by our parents and by the people that are were raising us, basically like, oh, you need to look put together and put together always equated to straightening your hair. Like my, my hair got so fucking damaged because I straightened my hair from like when I was 13, probably from like 11 to 14 or 15, around 14 or 15, I just gave up and just resigned myself to the fact that I thought that I was fucking ugly and that nobody would want me. <laughs> like I was an old maid by 15, but I damaged my hair so much because I just kept, I kept on straightening it every single week to go to church because it, because I wouldn't be pretty. I wasn't pretty unless I straightened my hair. I remember like, even like getting scouted by producers and stuff and agents when, when my dad was trying to hawk me, like one of the members of the Jackson five, <laughs> um, you know, he would make me straighten my hair for like these photos and for meeting these people. Cause he's like, you want to look nice. You want to look put together. And so that equates in your head to like, looking nice means not looking natural, like not the way that my hair comes out of my head. I, I, I remember, I remember like one day I just had it and I brushed my hair out obsessively for three hours. Looking back, like if my parents had been paying fucking attention or like had any knowledge about mental health, they probably should have fucking taken me to a psycho psychologist because I brushed my hair excessively for three hours thinking that maybe if I brushed it enough, it would straighten out and that would just solve all my problems. We were poor as shit. We were living in hotels, could barely, aff couldn't afford new clothes, you know, couldn't afford like bare necessities. But I was like, if my hair is straight, then everything will be okay. 
And that is so, that's so fucked. That is so fucking fucked. And then, and then like, and you know, so that, so there's that, that anxiety of always having to have your hair done perfect because you're not perfect the way you come out naturally. And almost every black girl has gone through the, <laughs> the tragedy of liking a boy or liking, liking a person um, that is not black and having the news broke to you that that person doesn't like black girls or they're not into black girls. You're, the, you're not their type. Like that was usually the code like back when I was like, uh, a preteen or teenager like he's not your like I'm not he you're not his type and you know like you'd have like the the messages like passed on to you by some friend of me or some bitch mine was named Camille um <laughs> she was so fucking mean to me um and and it's just like it, and just that 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 realization that like oh my gosh like I for for some of for some people I am just never gonna be enough like really like by being black that automatically makes me ugly and undesirable and so every time you like somebody if you happen to like somebody that is not your race there is this anxiety in you about letting them know how you feel not not because of the general fear of being rejected but just the fear that they don't think that black girls are attractive which happened so much. My first boyfriend ever was white. And I remember he asked me out and he, I laughed when he asked me out and he looked so serious and he looked, <laughs> he must have been so terrified because I laughed in his face because I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a joke at what, 13 years old. I was like, you, a white boy, think I'm attractive that can't be true, that doesn't happen. But it was true. He really did think that I was attractive. And I was like, well, fucking shit, are you serious? Like, <laughs> like, like, how fucked up is that? That like, I had that low of a stand, like that low of an opinion of myself, or I ranked myself that low as a human that I could not believe that somebody found me attractive despite being black despite being black that's fucking crazy so like just the hair the dating and whatever and then of course the like walking around making sure that you don't come off as aggressive to certain people um you know worrying of like because you know your enthusiasm translates to a lot of white people as having an attitude so you can't be as strong with your emotions as other people get to be and so you have to keep that in check and you have to kind of like you have to mimic you have to kind of learn how to mimic other people of other races in order to have your emotions look acceptable you know and then and then god for and then god forbid like you don't fit a stereotypical image of what a black girl is supposed to be or supposed to like or supposed to talk like you know you know for a long time liking anime was you know that was something that everybody had to hide but if you were like a black girl like what you like marvel you like anime you you you, you listen to you listen to punk rock like what the fuck is wrong with you and like all of these and like all of these things that you had to do in secret because you're afraid also of not being accepted by your own community and don't even get me started on the on the mixed race thing i have a whole video just about that but i like i said that's why it's in a whole different video but i want to talk about black women in general in this in this video um just like this this anxiety about about like literally just being able to to be yourself and and then and in those moments that you are yourself just wondering am i doing it 
am I doing it all wrong? Like there are rules as, as like of what I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to date, what I'm supposed to look like, what I'm supposed to act like, what are the rules? Am I following the rules? Like, <laughs> does my hair look presentable? Like, you know, you know just <sighs> all of these things. And I don't, and I feel like we don't talk about that enough in mental health. I don't think we talk about, like, like I said, black girl anxiety, all of these very unique ways in which anxiety has been induced in us. I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a professional. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. But looking back on my life, all of these little anxieties and obsessive behaviors that I, that I, like, uh, accumulated that was completely based on me being black and completely based on not feeling like I was enough and, and getting it in my head that I have to always be trying to be better. Like I have to, I have to always be presentable. I have to change almost every aspect of myself to be presentable and to be accepted by the outside world. And even if I do that, even when I do that, I will still not be enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still not be enough. We do not talk about this enough. And I and I'm I'm starting to talk about it. Like I'm starting to talk about these things in therapy and fi- and like I finally have a therapist that's like, you know, people people ignore racial trauma as trauma. Like they don't consider like people for like either forget or don't consider like experiences like that trauma or or even worth mentioning in, <clears throat> if you don't want to call it drama but it, <sighs> we just need to talk about it more man because it'd be fucking us up and it took and it took me like literally 20 something years to love myself and when i say love myself i mean to get to the point where i didn't feel like i didn't believe anymore that I was a subhuman animal because of being African American. Like that deep, which is disgusting. It took me 20 something years to get to like cast off all those shackles of black girl anxiety or even or at least begin to and not consider myself a subhuman organism that's just walking around pretending to be human, hoping to be accepted. Like, it's been like, man, that I'm not into black girls thing, man. Like, there's like, there's nothing like getting rejected in that way by someone saying like, fundamentally at the atomic level, who and what you are disgusts me. And so, has and then having that done over and over and over again as a kid that's fucked and I'm you, and you got to be lying if you're not gonna sit here and tell me that going through that kind of rejection doesn't have long-lasting psychological effects there is no way if there's any therapists out there watching this, please weigh in if you have anything uh, to add to this conversation because I think about this all the time and it is wild. That's all. <laughs> Just that, that's all. <laughs>